Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, the highest praise. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah this morning. I'm always glad. It's never a dull moment, but I'm always be able to lift up the name of God because he is always good, he's been good, and he is good right now. So I just want to tell God thank you for another chance and opportunity to be able to tell you thank you, that I love you, and there is none like you. So come on, one more hand clap of praise for God because he is so worthy to be praised, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He has been so good to us. He has been better to you than you can even be to yourself. So that's an awesome thing for us to know that God is good and his mercy endures forever. I was listening to the song this morning and the songwriter was just saying, who wouldn't serve a God like this? And I was like, wow. Because does anybody know him as a healer, huh? a provider, a sustainer, a way maker? Who wouldn't serve a God like this? A God that is always there. He does exceedingly, abundantly above that all you can ask or think. So who wouldn't serve a God like this? Glory be to your name, God. I, I won't be before you long. I have a scripture. In it's 1 Samuel 16. I'm going to read you 6 and 7 out the Amplified Version of the Bible. And it reads, So it happened when, that, when they had come, he looked at Eli, the eldest son, and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And I read you that to tell you that you're anointed, but not appointed. But let me help you out while I say that. God has anointed you at this particular time. Just because man said it's not going to happen right now, don't mean that God is not going to do that thing that you're looking for him to do in your life. I hope I ain't the only one that felt that. Because I am anointed and you are anointed too. God chose David for his heart. Come on, let me say it again. God chose David for his heart for God. Not because something he had done, not what he's going to do. But just because the heart of the David. And he loved God so much. I'm going to read you something and I'm getting out of the way. See, when we follow God's plan for our lives, despite the, the barriers that we appear before us, we come reminded, Jeremiah 29, 11, for God knows the plan for us. They're of good and not of evil to bring us what? To an expected end. God knows what he's going to do for us. He already has it planned for us. It's already worked out for us. It's just going to manifest itself in our lives. We got to believe that. So I want to tell you this. God has a purpose for us. He will not let circumstances rob us of his plan and guess what watch God bloom in your life because when it's your season I don't care what goes on what happens what it looks like even how you feel when it's your season watch what God do and watch how God comes and shows out guess what on your behalf not, to, not to because of what you've done, not because of you look so good, not because you dress so good, not because you always try to get it right. It's a heart of the matter because how you love God and how you love God's people will show everything that you do in your life. So I just want to tell you this morning, you are anointed, but just not appointed at the time that man says, but the time of God, you will always get what you need and what you want. Now, come on, somebody give God a hand. Thank you, thank you. Come on, as we pray, as we, as we pray, and just thank God for his anointing. As we thank God right now for his anointing, Heavenly Father, God, you are so good to us. God, you are amazing. You are awesome. You are magnificent in all your ways. And we know right now we are nothing without you, God. So we just thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. 
We thank you, Lord God, for giving us things that we don't deserve and holding things back, God, that we really, truly do deserve. We thank you for covering us, Father God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us, God. Move and have its being, Lord God. Do exactly what you want to do. We invite you in, God, to have your way in our lives, God. We can't do it without you, Lord God. We can't live without you, God. We don't want to live without you, God. So right now, we're just asking you, Lord God, and we're thanking you, Lord God, even in advance for your favor, Lord God, for everything that you do in our lives, Lord God. We thank you this morning, Lord God, because you woke us up, Lord God. You didn't allow the deaf angel to touch our home, Lord God. So right now, Lord God, you're magnificent. You are so worthy to be praised, God. And we just want to let you know that we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ who died, but rose on the third day with all power, giving us life, that we can have life in abundance. So Father God, as we lift our pastor up to you, his family, Lord God, and everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God, I truly pray, Lord God, that you bless them in a mighty way, Lord God, and everything they're going through, Lord God, show them, Lord God, that you're in control of it all, Lord God. The enemy can't do nothing, Lord God, unless you allow him to. So we thank you for fixing everything in our life, Lord God. And doing exceedingly, abundantly, above, above all that we can ask or think. We always want to ask you for forgiveness of all the sins that were known and unknown to us, Lord God. Word, thought, and deed, present, past, and future. And Master in heaven, we love you, we thank you, and we praise your holy name. We do ask these and many other blessings in your son Jesus Christ's name. We pray, Father God. The church say amen. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 You're mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just want to worship God. Hallelujah. Just stand to your feet and let's just worship God this morning. And give God praise, give God glory, give God all the honor. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I live my boy to worship. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. As the elder was up this morning, and he was asking, and he was saying, exalting that God is whoever we need him to be. If you need a healer this morning, God is a healer. If you need a provider, God is a provider. God said he'll supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever you need God to be, if you need a counselor, God is a counselor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I remember when Moses was asking God, he said, Lord, when he was telling him to go before Egypt, to, before Pharaoh, he said, who shall I say sent me? He said, tell him, I am. Yeah, yeah. I am that I am has sent me. Whoever we need God to be, he is whoever we need him to be. If you need a healer, he's a healer. If you need a deliverer, he's a deliverer. If you just need peace, God has that too. He's God. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of our peace. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the God that healeth. Whatever you need God to be, he is. I am. The priest in my message for you. Whatever you need him to be. That's who he is. I don't know who you need him to be in your life today. I don't know if you had a rough week and you just need God just to touch you this morning. I just invite you just to worship God. Just to praise him. Just to call on him. For he is whatever you need him to be. I am. Second Peter 1 and 3 tells us that God has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. I have everything that I need. I have everything I need. I have everything that makes me You 
Jehovah Jireh.
Jesus. God, we thank you for that Zoe life this morning. God, we give you glory and honor, God, for who you are, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for you are the almighty God, mighty warrior, God. You are great in battle, Lord God, and we bless your name, Jesus. We give you glory and honor, God. We thank you for who you are, God. We give you glory this morning, God. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, God. We praise you, Lord. Now, God, we ask you, oh God, to move in a mighty way, God on the hearts of every individual here and those that are viewing, oh God, online, God. We thank you, Lord, that every need is met in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout like God is good to you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now wave those hands and give God a hand praise. <laughs> hallelujah. Mm. Wow. Mm. I, don't, I don't feel like preaching right now. I feel like shouting. Because God is a good God. Always on time. He's faithful. He's just. He's righteous. He's good. He's a blessing. 
He's patient. He's kind. He's all that I need. He's the great I am. Somebody ought to give him a praise right now. Somebody ought to stand and give God a praise for the... Woo! Hallelujah. Mm. Woo! Always on time. Always understands. The great I am. Mm. Lest I keep you too long today, I want to want to remind you again on last week's ministry. Uh, just a reminder that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the reason why they pick this month out of every year, they want to increase the awareness of the disease and to raise funds for research into. It. The, the cause, the prevention, the diagnosis, the treatment, and the, and the cure. So I, I, I want you to please review the health ministry presented on last Sunday by Dr. Uh, Melissa Cleveland. And um, I want you to make sure that you get checked, that you get screened, uh, that you do the self-test uh, at home, and that you be informed. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He also wants us, so that means he wants us to live. That means we got to take care of ourselves and we got to do what's necessary. God has given us doctors and nurses and physicians to help us so that we can continue to stay here, to be a light, to influence. To do the will of God and to pass the torch when it's time for us to, to leave. I want you to bear all these things in mind. <clears throat> Next month, uh, we will have another health presentation. Uh, this is not just to fill in gaps, fill in space. We do this on purpose so that <clears throat> we can be armed. Our vision is to minister to the total man. That means the spiritual, the psychological, the health, the financial, the uh, everything. And so that's what we bring to, <clears throat> to the kingdom of God. And so we want you to take advantage. We want you to take advantage. Uh, we also want to talk about, we have a presentation um, from the Lawsons uh, concerning uh, safety, particularly around uh, Christmas time, the Christmas holidays. So they will be coming. And um, we just thank God for the giftings that he has <clears throat> in this ministry. Once again, we'd like to thank our visitors for being here. We pray that the Lord is blessing you and that he's filling you and that you are having a great time. So let's give God a praise for our visitors. <laughs> Today, I want to talk to you very briefly. And y'all know how brief goes. Thank the Lord we have time back there. So that <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm used to preaching a whole hour, hour and a half. And so on and so forth. But God is just good. He gives us the, the energy and the stamina to do what we need to do. And to all of you all that are members here, to the family, those of you who support this great ministry, thank you so much for being here. And those of you who are listening, thank you so much for all that you do. Just because we can't see you doesn't mean that we don't feel uh, all that you do and your giving, your support, and your prayers especially. So today I want to talk about the voice of wisdom, <clears throat> the voice of wisdom. And the question is, can you hear the voice of wisdom? Can you recognize when wisdom is talking? Can you hear? Do you understand? Wisdom talks all the time. But the question is, can you hear? So the voice, the voice of wisdom. I believe that the Proverbs the writer of Proverbs wrote this as we will be, our main scripture will be over in Proverbs chapter 7, pretty much the whole chapter. But I, I need us to understand something. I believe that the writer of Proverbs wrote this because he knew that even being saved, even being in the Lord, even being uh, in the kingdom of God, 
if we do not have wisdom, we're still going to live a defeated life. And so, and we must understand that we're in these bodies. But these bodies are going back to the dust, and these bodies, they don't want to do right. The flesh does not want to do right. You know, from the beginning, we, we had a problem because sin was passed down from Adam. And so we just, we, we have a problem in this flesh. We have a problem in this body. Uh, we turn from, we, we vacillate from carnal to spirituality, from flesh to spirituality. And we, we, you know, some days we're more spiritual than others, and other days we're more fleshly than others. And so you have to understand, the writer understood this. And he, and he said something, matter of fact, as we go to James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15, we, we understand that we are made a certain way and we have certain things going on in us. And so we need to understand what's going on in us. We need to understand our makeup. We need to understand uh, the human side of us so that we can uh, receive what we need to receive from God to help us in the spiritual. And so James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15, the Amplified says, it says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God. For God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil, and he himself tempts no one. So if you're being tempted, it's not God, it's the devil. And so, but look what he says. He says, and, and this is what we want to, want to springboard off of. So before we go into to, to the voice of wisdom, he says, but every person is tempted when he is drawn away. That means enticed and baited by his own evil desires. That's lust, passion. And so, so, so we have to understand that the propensity to sin, the, 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 the ability to do wrong, the notion to do wrong, the inclination to do wrong is already in us, according to James. And see, what happens is the enemy, he studies us. He studies our film, and he understands the weakness that we have. And so that's the part that he, he attacks. And he knows us better than we know ourselves. And so we must understand that uh, 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 we're tempted when we're drawn away and enticed and baited by our own evil desires. And then, then, and then it sums it up in verse 15. It says, then the evil desires, when it has conceived, that's why you got to, the fight is in the battle. The, the battle is in the mind. And so the, the evil desires come from the thought life. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, the next thing you know, your emotions are engaged, and the next thing you know, you find yourself carrying out the act. So you have to understand that you have to realize wisdom teaches us. The voice of wisdom teaches us that uh, let's put a pause on it. Let's wait. Let's see what's going on here. Let's think about this thing. And so it says, then evil desires, when it has conceived, give birth to sin. So when you're thinking wrong and you're feeling wrong, you're probably going to do wrong. <laughs> And then it says birth to sin. And then it says sin, when it is full and mature, brings forth death. So all the time, anytime sin has its way, at the end of that is going to be death. And so you have to understand the writing of the word. And I'm just going to run through this, and then we're going to Proverbs. Over in Psalms 51.5, Amplify says, Behold, I was brought forth in a state of iniquity. Check this out. My mother was sinful, who conceived me, and I too am sinful. So we came into this world sinners. And that's why we have to be born again. We were born the first time as sinners because of the fall of Adam. And so we have to be born again. And after we're born again, then we walk in the spirit, but we still live in this body. So we have problems and issues. And that's the reason why we need to hear the voice of wisdom. Can I go forward? So once again, even after you give your life to Jesus Christ, we need to hear and understand the voice of wisdom in order to be successful in this life. Proverbs 7, 1 through 27. I'm going to kind of move through this because there's certain points I want to make in this message. The first thing here is always keep wisdom, or should I say always keep wise advice in mind. Always keep wise advice in mind. Look for it. Search for it. Somebody give you some wise advice, older, younger, whatever, man, you crave that. Keep it. Memorize it. It's going to bless your life. Look what it says, uh, verse 2. 
It says only this word, and I'm just paraphrasing. It says only this word, advice, wisdom. It says obey, I'm sorry. Obey this word. Obey this advice. Obey this wisdom and live. Then it says guard it as your most precious possession. So you, when you hear truth, when you hear wisdom, guard it. Don't let lies don't let deceitfulness and circumstances and negativity around you steal that wisdom away from you. Make sure that when you get it, you obey it. So much so that we need to write it down. Verse 3 talks about writing them down. And it says, also keep them deep within your heart. That means keep them hid. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. I've got to have some word, the power of God's voice living in this inside of me, and I've got to hide it, and I've got to keep it in a place where nobody can come and take it away. You can't talk me out of it. You can't pay me out of it. You can't trick me out of it because it's hidden, and that's why sometimes you can't tell everything. You can't see everything. You can't let the enemy know what you know and what you don't know. Some things has just got to be between you and God. Wisdom teaches us a lot to don't, sometimes you don't have to say stuff. You don't have to say, you know, you know one thing I've learned about speaking? If you don't speak it, the devil won't know. You can have the battle going on in your mind. You can have all this stuff going on in your mind. But unless you, but, but until you speak it, when you speak it, the devil says, aha, I know what he's thinking. Aha, I know how he feels. Aha, I know what he might do. So he begins to, mm, he begins to create things in your life to help you to get on the wrong path, to help you move in the wrong direction. And so he says, he says, write it down, keep it deep, hidden deep in your heart. And then the board, the, in, in verse 4, it's talking about, it says, love wisdom. Make her a cherishable member of your family. A beloved member. So let's back up this train a little bit and let's think about the fact that how should I view and think about wisdom? I've got to crave it. I've got to love wisdom like it's a member of my family. I've got to cherish it. I've got to say no matter what I see and feel and know, I need wisdom to be successful in this life. Must have wisdom. And that's why the older people used to ask when you do certain things, they, they didn't beat you up. They just ask you a question. Where is the wisdom in that. They want you to think about what you just did. They want you to think about what you just said. They want you to think about the act you just performed. They want you to understand that if you have wisdom and understanding that you can be very successful. And then it says in verse 5, it says, let her hold you back from relationship with other women and their flattery sweet talk. So wisdom keeps you out of trouble. Wisdom will help you. It's, and wisdom guards against the simple mind and the destru and destruction. So one of the things we want to bring out is that wisdom guards against the simple mind and destruction. Being simple minded, because let me just back, let me just, I don't want to rush through this. There are some things in life that you just don't know about. And wisdom will teach you. Teach you. Wisdom will teach you that the grass is not greener on the other side. Wisdom will teach you it ain't nothing like it look. Wisdom will teach you that you have to be careful about them, them, those soft, sweet, encouraging words. Everybody patting you on the back, not really for you. Can't get no help in here. Wisdom teaches you that just because people are nice and they invite you to eat and they're doing all these things, particular things for you that they don't have you uh, at heart, your best interest at heart. We, wisdom teaches you, you better know the source and you better know the tree by the fruit that it bears. If you got a tree coming up hollering, I'm an apple tree, I'm an apple tree, I'm an apple tree, and all you see is thorns and thistles, you better run away. I, I, need to, I need to stay where I'm supposed to be here. I need y'all to pray for me. I need, I, I need y'all to pray that I'm 
that I stay where I'm supposed to be here. And so being so 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 we see here that in scripture that 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 being simple minded, which means being naive, inexperienced and foolish and unwise and lacking common sense is, is not good. And that's what verse six through twenty one talks about. Can I read it? Verse, verse, verse 6 through 21, uh, and we're in the living Bible, says, verse 6 says, I was looking out the window of my house one day, and I saw a simple-minded lad. Said a young man didn't have no sense at all. Said he was full of strength, and he was maturing in his body, and he was handsome, and he was young and vibrant, but he didn't have no sense. Anybody know in it? And so it goes on to say he lacked common sense. It says, walking at twilight down the street to the house of this wayward girl, a prostitute. Now, I need you to understand, we said this before. Not only is the Bible, the Bible is talking about, is, is literally talking about a prostitute. But you can take, you can lift out of this, the illumination and the revelation that as you move through life, and as you see things in life, you can be naive and lack common sense in a lot of areas. And these areas are, are very dangerous. Very dangerous. So you have to be careful of the choices that you make. It says, verse 10, it says, she approached him saucy and pert and dressed how seductively. And she was the uh, brash coarse type. She was a brash coarse type. Seen often in the streets and markets, soliciting at every corner for men to be her lover. So this naive guy didn't even know that about her. So you've got to make sure that, that, that you live life. And, and here's the thing. Can I just talk to the young people? Uh, your parents have been around for a while, and they know a lot of things. And so they, they are not trying to keep you from having fun. They're trying to keep you from death. They're trying to keep you from destruction. They're trying to keep you from making mistakes that you can't bounce back from. They're trying to keep you from, 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 from harming yourself. They're trying to keep you away from danger. They're trying to keep you from falling in the same pits that they fell in. They're trying to keep you from being scarred like they were scarred. See, see, we don't tell you everything. We don't tell you the problems and the issues and the psychological and the emotion thing, the emotional things and the trauma that we have to try to either cover up or, or, or walk through and work through in spite of. We don't want you to go through and experience what we've experienced because we know it's pain and pain is real. So we want you to, 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 to move around. We, you, you, life is just going to happen, and you're going to have enough problem with just trying to live decently in life without all the trickery and the seductiveness and all the other stuff that the enemy throws at you. And so the Bible says it talks about how this, how this woman is just listed at every corner for men to be a lover. She put in verse 12, she puts, 13, she puts her arm around him and kissed him. And with saucy look, she says, I was just coming to look for you. And here you are. Let me tell you something about trouble. You don't have to look for trouble. Trouble will find you. You all into yourself, and you smart, and you look good looking, and you got all these things going on, and you're a good Christian, and man, you popular, and you have influence, and, 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 and so you, 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 you think you have arrived, but I need you to understand, don't fool yourself, don't get too powerful, you need wisdom in your life, you need God to talk to you, you need the voice of God to speak to you, to help you not to fall with this one. Fall in this area. See what's really happening. No. Got to have some wisdom, man. And so he says, come here with me and I'll fix you a wonderful dinner. And after that, we'll, uh, uh, well, my bed is spread it with lovely color sheets of fine linen imported from Egypt, perfumed with mirth, aloe, and cinnamon. Come on, let's take our fill of love until morning, for my husband is away on a long trip. And, 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 and another thing, he's going to be gone for a while because the, he, he took a wallet full of money with him, and he won't return for several days. Look like the coast is clear. Look like all is well. Look like this is a good setup. I'm going to get, I'm going to do what I need to do. We're going to have a good time, and we're going to be done, and nobody will know anything. 
You ever looked at some and thought that you, and, and, no, 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 I know you have. We all have. We all have been in a situation where we thought that we could get away with it, and we planned it, and we did get away with it for a little while. But how many of you know we always reap what we sow? There's a, there, there, there's a scripture that says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Can I turn that around? Uh, joy endure for a night, but weeping coming in the morning when you do wrong. Somebody didn't get that. You just enjoy what you're doing, and you just love it, and you just feel real good. But let me tell you, weeping coming. You going to pay. And so wisdom said, don't even go there. I not only had my parents tell me a lot of things, I had people around me. God has always put people in my life to speak into my life, to tell me certain things. Whether it was at my parents, outside of my parents, there were my teachers, my coaches, people in the neighborhood, people at church, Sunday school teachers, pastors, friends of the family. Just, just would drop. And one of my teachers, she said, um, look, you, that, that ain't what you want to do. That, my teacher told me, she said, that relationship right there, that ain't what you want to do. You need to stop that. I'm like, wow. I thought my mama was at another school teaching. <laughs> How many you know God has people everywhere to speak into your life? If you would listen, the voice of wisdom, can I move on? And so we need you to understand that it says, so she, so, 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 so she seduced him with her pretty speech, her coaxing, charming, and her uh, willing until, she, until he yielded to her. He couldn't resist her flattery. And that's why you've got to have some options in your life of truth. And wisdom. See, if you don't know truth, you won't know error. If you don't know truth, you won't know when there's a lie going on. And so you have to have the Spirit of God inside of you and the Word of God inside of you to let you know so that you can discern between truth and lies. So you have to be exposed to the truth enough to know that when a lie comes up, it's not true. If you don't know truth, here's the deal, here's the deal. Because lies sound so much like the truth. All you have to do, you can, uh, and you're all taking these type tests. You take a test where you read a sentence, and they change one word in the sentence, and it changes the whole meaning. Right. Change the whole meaning. And so that, that, that's, how, that's how lies are. The wider the lie, the greater the deception. And so we must understand that you got to hunger and thirst for truth. And it says he couldn't resist the flattery. So I want to I talk to you the second thing here. So the first thing is, is that, is, is that we, we've got to make sure that we've got to guard against being simple-minded, naive, and inexperienced. Because that will lead to destruction. The second thing is wisdom, wisdom guards against destruction. When you have wisdom, you can avoid destruction. A lot of people that have they're living in situations now because they didn't use much wisdom. And then, you know, and, I, and I'd like to say this, and, you know, you might like it, you might not, but all the knowledge and information that we have nowadays, there is no excuse not to know. So, so, if you want to know, you can know. And then the question is, what do you do with what you know? There are some people right now, they're, they're, they're in the fork of the road. They, they, they can go right or left. And the thing is, what's going to keep them, what's going to help them to be successful in life and change and do better is going to depend on which direction they take. When you hear the word, or you, some people have talked to you and they've talked to you about things in your life that you need to do and change, you've got to come to a conclusion that if you want different results, you're going to have to do things different, and you're going to have to take their advice. You're going to have to take what they've told you. Otherwise, you're going to die. 
Somebody didn't hear that. So I'm, I'm not going to prop you up and tell you that you just going, God going to make a way for you and he going to bless you and he going to keep you and you're going to have the favor of God. On your, you know, people hear that kind of stuff and they live in any kind of way and making bad choices. It's not going to happen if you continue to go the wrong way, make the wrong decision, do what you want to do, do you, you're going to end up dead. Well, pastor, that's not the gospel. That's not good news. That's wisdom talking and speaking the truth. So you have to decide whether you want to live or die. Whether you want to live to a ripe old age or whether you want to die young. Whether you want to live and enjoy life or whether you want to struggle the rest of your life. Whether you want to be cursed the rest of your life or the favor and blessings of God on your life. You got to choose. We've all had to choose. And not only did we choose, we are still choosing. We, we, yeah. Every day we have to make decisions. Yeah. And those decisions are, are, are going to determine what quality of life we have. The decision we make today will determine the quality of life that we're going to have tomorrow. And the good thing I like about tomorrow is that I don't have to worry about it because I know who holds tomorrow. Can I move on? The Bible says, so we have to God, we have to wisdom guards against destruction. The Bible says in 22, says he followed her as an ox going to the butcher or as a stag, that's a male deer that is trapped, waiting to be killed with an arrow through its heart. You can reject the truth all you want to, but that will not change the circumstances and the fact that you're on your way to the slaughterhouse. If you look around you, you can see it happening. And you have to tell yourself and you have to mean it. I'm not going to be that guy. Life will teach you some things. Life will teach you what not to do. Watch people's behavior. Watch their mindset. Watch what they do. What they do. Watch what their habits are. And the Lord will teach you and he'll tell you, mm -mm. No. I remember the Geico commercial, the Geico commercial where the guy go upstairs and he's, the, you know, he get about, about ready to get the house, sell the house. He go upstairs and turn the light on and he see all those, those things up there and he's like, mm-mm, no thank you. See, with, see you, you, you got to have enough wisdom and strength in your life to understand when something come against you, or should I say, well, this is not come against you, because this, these scriptures are talking about this guy was just, I mean, he was like, wow, it's going to be a blessing. Mm-mm. No. And, and so as I, as I leave you, we see here verse 23 says, waiting to be killed with an arrow through his heart. Makes another example, says he was, a, he was as a bird flying into a snare, not knowing the fate awaiting it there. And I want to leave you with this. The third thing that wisdom teaches you to be proactive. Proactive. We've got to stop, stop living a life of reactiveness. Things happen and we react. Things happen that we react. We have to plan. We must live a life of proactiveness. That's what the Bible is about. The Bible teaches us, and it gives us examples, and it shows us, and it gives us wisdom. It gives us power and strength and know-how so that we can know things ahead of time, so that we can be proactive. Know what's going to happen before it happens. Understand that if it happens, it can happen to you. So we can look and learn. So he says in verse 24, says, listen to me, young man, young lady. And not only listen, but obey. He says, don't let your desires get out of hand. Don't let yourself think about her. Don't go near her. Stay away from where she walks lest she tempt you and seduce you. So there are some places you just can't go at all. There are some folk you just can't connect with at all. There's some situation you just cannot be in at all. There's some company you just cannot keep. 
he says, he, he, so he says, listen to me, young man, and, and, and not only listen, but obey. A, B, and C. Don't let her desires get you out of hand. Don't let your desires get out of hand. Don't let yourself think about her and don't go near her. Stay away from her where she walks, lest she tempt you and seduce you. That means lest she lure you, entice you, invite you, and make your mouth water. Here again, seduction and here in this scripture means entice someone uh, into sexual activity. For she has been the ruin of multitude. A vast host of men have been her victims. If you want to find the route to hell, look for a house. But I like what Job says. Job says this. I mean, it's in the Bible. Job says this in the King James Version. He says, he found this out. He said, and unto man, he said, behold, this is how you end up being successful. He says, when it comes to mankind, he says, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. So what's wisdom on my part? How do I get wisdom? The first thing I need to do is fear God, respect him, reverence him, understand that he is who he say he is. He's jury judge and executioner. He made me. He can hurt me and he can help me. He's God Almighty. Fear of the God. Respect him so much so that it doesn't matter whose eyesight you're in. You're always in the eyesight of God. Amen. He sees everything. So respect him and live accordingly. And when you do not repent, turn around and get back right. He says that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So you can talk about you just as wise all you want to, but if you don't change and do something different. Yes. So I want to leave with you today the voice of wisdom. Can you recognize? Can you hear the voice of wisdom? God speaks to us every day. He speaks to you every day through people, through circumstances, even in your quiet time. Listen to his voice and live a successful life. God bless you today. We're going to pray.